students. You'll notice that behind me um, there will be a slideshow that will uh, very shortly be running. Uh, many of you will recognise pictures from your own uh, birthing units, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Before I go any further, I'd like to put on record uh, my thanks to the tremendous work that the people in this room do for improving the quality of care for the right women, and in particular to uh, Cathy Warwick, um, who is a tremendous advocate for midwifery uh, in the United Kingdom, and uh, I have a tremendous pleasure working with her, uh, making sure that we keep uh, the high quality care of women, and giving children the very best start in life, at the very top of the government's agenda. And as many of you know, I have a uh, background working uh, in obstetrics. I've worked alongside some of the people in this room. I know that uh, some of you told me um, most recently when I was working that you would be here today. Some of you will work with at the moment. And I understand, I know, the difficulties that we all face uh, in providing that high quality care and the challenges uh, of working in maternity. It's probably, I think, one of the most rewarding things in the world to do, to have the privilege to bring a new life into the world. And that's something that uh, I uh, always aspired to do during my time as a medical student. It's something that people in this room do on a daily basis. It's a tremendous privilege. Um, and I, I know how uh, working on Labour Ward can be sometimes backbreakingly hard work. But I wanted to reassure you that um, together, uh, I know we can continue to make a difference in delivering high quality care for women. And I hope I can also uh, reassure you that there has been considerable the progress made by the government in providing greater support for you over the last three years. Uh, and also, um, there is a lot of uh, good still to come in helping all of us improve the care that we deliver for women and babies. Now, Cathy um, made the very important point, which you are speaking, that investment in midwives saves money, and she's absolutely right. Uh, and I'm very pleased that the Royal College of Midwives is working towards having a named midwife for every woman to improve continuity of care before, during, and after childbirth. Now, we know that there has been a historical shortage of midwives, and we need to make sure that we put that right. The number of midwives has increased by almost 1,500 uh, over the last three years, and the number of health visitors has also increased by over a thousand. And there are a record number of midwives in training, more than 5,000 currently in training. Some of you in training are here today. And I can confirm to you that we will maintain the current record training levels for the final two years of this Parliament in 2014 and 15, and for 2015 and 16. So we will make sure that we continue to do all we can as a government fund the training of additional midwives so that we can deal with that historical shortage. We're well on the way to doing that with over 1,500 more in the last three years and we'll continue to make progress. Now whilst the birth and midwife ratio is uh, a crude tool which is uh, about throughput and not about uh, outcomes of care, it does demonstrate the number of midwives on the ground are increasing. And in 2010 the ratio of uh, births a midwife was 34.1 and last year it was uh, had improved to 33.2 but there's still a considerable way to go um, and the number of midwives is now going up at over double the rate of births and whilst that these national figures do show that progress has been made we should see continued improvement in staffing levels in your local maternity services in the months and the years ahead. But important to delivering high quality care is not just uh, about increasing midwives, that is the most central, most important thing we can do is increase the number of midwives. It's also about evaluating the fact that when we're delivering high quality care, we need to not just look at the outcomes and the quality of the clinical service, but also ensure that we are uh, delivering a holistic service and where the women and the families that we are looking after uh, are uh, reporting good experiences of their care. We know from the NAO report last week that 85% uh, of women uh, are now reporting uh, excellent or very good care. We also know that many units are now, now put in place the friends and family test to make sure that we are uh, monitoring the experience of women on a, if you like, an hour-by-hour -hour basis to make sure the focus in healthcare 
is not just uh, on good clinical outcomes, but is also about good experience. And in that respect, maternity care is almost unique because it's the one opportunity that we all have to make a positive impact uh, on women's lives. We're dealing with, thankfully, a general healthy population in maternity care, but it's an opportunity for the NHS to engage with women, engage with families, and make a massive impact and support sometimes uh, those more vulnerable women to making uh, improvements and life choices that will benefit themselves, but also giving their children the very best start in life. Uh, and that's why it's important that we do monitor um, the women's experience of care and make sure that we take those to the friends and family test and use that to hold the commissioners of maternity services to account and hold the hospital managers and the birthing unit managers uh, in the units that everybody works in to account to make sure that they respond to the, to the uh, quality of care that women report through the friends and family test. But today I want to talk, talk particularly about maternal mental health. Uh, and I'm sure that you'll all agree that the most important thing we can do is to support new parents so that their baby has that best start in life. And we know that health and well-being of women is critical to the development of their children, both before and after birth. That strong bond between a mum and her baby is crucial in giving each and every child the best start in life. And that is why we all recognise the importance of maternal mental health during pregnancy, delivery, and in the postnatal period. And we have strong evidence that poor maternal mental health is associated with low birth rate weight and increased rate of mental ill health in children. We know that maternal depression and anxiety in pregnancy and during a child's early life affect 10 to 15 percent of pregnant women. And poor maternal mental health is often not the only issue. Some of the women that we look after face difficult circumstances at home and challenging social issues like poor housing, domestic violence and poverty. We also know that suicide is now the leading cause of maternal death and that's something I'm sure we all find distressing and unacceptable. All of you in this room are already doing so much to support women with mental illness but I'm sure that we can be more effective still in improving the quality of care available in maternity for women with mental health problems. And that's why I'm pleased if I can confirm to you today that we will be doing more to support women with perinatal mental ill health 